The Provider Self Update PSU, is a data collection tool for gathering information about early years and childcare provision. This will be used by the Early Years and Childcare Service for assessing the sufficiency of provision and will be published to Find Childcare, a searchable directory of childcare in Devon for parents to view information about your services, depending on your consent levels. This is a tool for you to advertise your business. If you do not have your own website, your listing on Find Childcare may be helpful for your Ofsted inspector as part of the planning and preparation stage undertaken before inspections. Assessing the sufficiency of provision and providing information to parents are both statutory duties for Devon County Council as set out in Early Education and Childcare Statutory Guidance for Local Authorities. So how does it work? Imagine the system is a filing cabinet and the records of providers are the hanging files inside your filing cabinet. Information is put into and taken out of the files and there is plenty of room to add more files because the filing cabinet is huge. It is also secure and can be locked so the information isn't made available to the wrong people. The Early Years and Childcare Service look after the filing cabinet and then put some of that information onto a website for parents. All providers will be asked to enter their details using the Provider Self Update section of the Provider Portal. This will include things like contact details, opening times and the age range they work with. So who needs to complete the Provider Self Update? The Early Years and Childcare Service have a duty to assess the sufficiency of all childcare. This means all provision for children aged from birth to 16 year olds or up to 18 year olds with additional needs will be asked to complete the provider self update. This includes both Ofsted registered and unregistered provision. This is how providers and their services are set up. One provider may run different services, such as a before school club, a day nursery, after school club, holiday club or weekend club. Providers must complete the provider self update for each service they run. Providers who are in receipt of the earliest funding, known as funded providers, are required to complete the provider self update as well as the early years census in the spring term as part of the provider agreement. Funded providers already use the provider portal to complete headcount tasks, validate 30-hour codes and claim disability access funding. The provider self-update is another section of the provider portal. When do I need to complete the provider self-update? Please complete it as soon as possible. You only need to complete the full provider self-update and go through all the screens once. Once you have completed it and entered all your details, you only need to go into the provider self update and make updates as and when there is a change to your provision or if you set up a new service. Periodically, we will contact you to make sure your details are up to date. If there are no changes, you can click a button to say no changes required. Funded private, voluntary and independent providers will receive a message at the appropriate time in spring term when they must also complete the early years census. What will be published to find childcare? On the consent tab of the provider self update, you will be asked to give consent to publish certain details to find childcare. This is a searchable directory that will replace pinpoint from the end of 2023. The more consent you give, the more information can be displayed and advertised to parents to enable them to make a quick and informed choice about the childcare they may wish to use. More information on which details are published is available in the guidance notes. You will also be asked to agree to a data privacy statement, which sets out your agreement to provide accurate and up-to-date information about your provision. This will all be used in accordance with our privacy policy. What do I do now? Please take the time to watch the training videos and read the guidance notes and complete the provider self update. For more information, please visit 
devon.cc forward slash PSU or email childcareinfo at devon.gov.uk. You can also follow us on Facebook and X. Thanks for watching. To log in to the provider portal, go to the address bar of your internet browser and type in www.devon.gov.uk forward slash EY provider portal, all one word. Press enter. It might be a good idea to save this page as a favourite or bookmark it on your browser. On the welcome screen, you will be prompted to enter your username and your password. Funded providers will already have these login details. Non-funded providers and new providers will be emailed these. If you have not received this, please email childcareinfo at devon.gov.uk. Once you've entered your username and password, press the blue login button. Forgotten your username? If you forget your username, this can be accessed by clicking on the link Forgotten your username below the login boxes. To request your username, enter your email address and then click on the blue submit button. Your username will be sent to you via email. When the email arrives, click on the link in the email and you will be directed back to the login page. Forgotten your password? If you forget your password, this can be accessed by clicking on the link Forgotten your password below the login boxes. To request your password, enter both your username and email address and then press on the blue submit button. A new password will be generated and sent to you on the registered email address. Click on the link within the email and enter your username and the temporary password supplied on the email. You will now be asked to update your password before logging in to the system. Please use at least one capital letter and number. Forgotten your secret question? To request your secret question, click on the link Forgotten your secret answer below the secret questions boxes. Enter your username and your email address and click on the blue submit button. You will now be sent an email. Click on the link in the email. Log in with your username and password. You will now be asked to enter a new secret answer for your secret question. Once submitted, your security question is updated and you will automatically be logged in. The first screen you will see when you log into the provider portal is the announcements page. This page displays important messages. Please read the announcements page and then click the blue continue button. The home page is where all portal functions are accessed. These include self update, which is for submitting information about your provision. For more information on this, please refer to the further videos and the guidance notes. User account management. This is the green button with the person icon. In this section, you will be able to change your password, change your secret question, set up and enable two step verification, show and hide all menus in the navigation bar, show and hide the page header. This affects the page header at the top of the screen and enable accessibility mode. When this is enabled, controls incompatible with screen readers will be replaced with compatible ones. Funded providers will also be able to see 30 hours extended, which is for validating 30 hour codes and checking eligibility. Disability access funding, where you can submit a disability access funding application and headcount, where you can submit your termly headcount and amendment claims for the early years funding. For further information on these areas, please see www.devon.gov.uk forward slash EYEF. From the home screen of the provider portal, scroll down and click on the blue self-update button. It will turn orange when you hover over it.
On the left hand side of the screen, you will see actions. Under actions, you will see self update. Click on the green self update button. It will turn orange when you hover over it. Your provision will be listed. Click on your provider name. Your services will be listed. Click on each service in turn to complete the self update for each service. If your provider or a service is not listed or a service is listed that you are no longer running, please email childcareinfo at devon.gov.uk. Click on the name of your service. You will need to go through each tab, complete or update your information and then press the blue submit buttons on each tab. Once you click into the self update, you will see a grey navigation bar. As you click further into the self update, this navigation bar has more levels. If you hover over each level of the navigation bar, you will see where clicking it will take you. For example, if I click on self update, it will take you back to the self update screen where you can see your list of provision. If I click on test childcare company, it will take you back to that provider's page where you will see that provider's list of services. If I click on test childcare company day nursery, it will take you back to the start of the self update for that service. You can use this to navigate. However, please remember that if you make any changes on any of the tabs, scroll down to the bottom and press the blue submit button. At the bottom of each page, you will also see a back button. This will take you back to the previous level. Just underneath the grey navigation bar, you will see different tabs. The tab you are currently on turns black and the other tabs are displayed in blue. In general, if the text is in blue, it is a link that can be clicked on. At the top of each of the tabs, you will see grey panels with some important information. These contain guidance notes. Please read the notes before completing that section. And don't forget, if you make changes, please scroll down to the bottom and press the blue submit button. Once you have navigated to the self update, you will need to go through each tab and subset of tabs and edit or add all of the information. The first time you do this, it will take approximately 20 minutes for each service. After that, it should only take a couple of minutes to make changes and update your record. On most tabs, there is a grey box containing guidance notes. Please read this before completing this section. Here, you will also be able to access the guidance notes and the training video for this tab. To edit any details on any screen, simply overwrite or change what is already there. Sometimes you will need to click on the name of a heading of something. In this case, if you hover over it, the words are blue and are underlined. It is a link to click into that area of the provider self update. Remember, you will need to press the submit button on each page. So once you have finished making the change or adding information, scroll down to the bottom and press the blue submit button in the bottom right corner of the screen. An orange notepad will appear next to any changes you have made. You can navigate up a level or back to the previous screen by clicking the orange back button in the bottom left corner. You will need to complete the self update for each service that you offer. However, you will only need to enter all of this information once. Once you have completed it, you will only need to go back in and edit any information as and when it changes. The 
first tab or page you will see is service details. Complete the information on your service details. To edit, just overwrite the existing content. For more information on each question, please refer to the guidance notes, which can be found at devon.cc forward slash PSU. The early years funding tick box means that you have signed the provider agreement and accept the early years funding. You will not be able to change this. If you wish to accept the early years funding or deregister from the funding, please contact eyef at devon.gov.uk. There are three questions just for funded providers. These are offers extended entitlement, extended offer ceases from, and details of your 30 hours offer. Once you've finished making your changes and updates, please scroll down to the bottom and press the blue submit button in the bottom right corner of the screen. An orange notepad will appear next to any changes you have made. Click on the next tab, Consent. On this page, you will give consent for your information to be published to find childcare in Devon. The more consent you give, the more information can be advertised to parents. Please read the Provider Self-Update Privacy Statement, which is displayed in the grey guidance box on the Consent tab and is also available in the Guidance Notes. There is a link to the Provider Self-Update Terms and Conditions, which you must read. You will then need to complete the consent options. Consent to publish details to find childcare in Devon. By ticking this box, you give permission to publish your details on find childcare in Devon. If you do not tick this box, no information will be published to find childcare in Devon and therefore parents will not be able to find out about your provision. If you do not tick this box, please complete the reason for not publishing your details. Funded providers are required to publish their details to find childcare in Devon as part of the Provider Agreement, Section 4.5. Once you have ticked this box, you can then give or not give consent to publish your cost details, your telephone number, and address details separately. For childminders and home child carers, only the first part of your postcode will be displayed. For all other providers, this will be your full address, including your full postcode. If you do not consent to publish your telephone number or address, then your telephone number or address on your record on Fine Childcare in Devon will default to Devon County Council's contact details, which is the Customer Service Centre number and the registered address at County Hall. This may mean you will have parents in Exeter inquiring about your childcare provision. Currently, there is no consent to publish your email address. If you have entered an email address, this will be published to find childcare in Devon. This has been an issue that has been raised. All messages from the Early Years and Childcare Service to childcare providers are communicated through the weekly digest a subscriber electronic newsletter emailed on a Friday morning. Please make sure that you are subscribed to the Digest. Messages are also communicated through social media, including Facebook, X, Instagram and LinkedIn. Please follow us. Occasionally, important messages that we need to make sure you see are emailed directly to you you will need to indicate by ticking the boxes if you consent to be contacted by the Early Years and Childcare Service by email, telephone, and these will mainly be used to contact you if you have a query about your self-update record or if one of our team needs to contact you about another issue, or by post. However, we will rarely post information. Next, you will need to tick the box as a virtual signature to indicate that you agree to the data privacy statement above. 
By doing this, you agree that your information can be used by the Early Years and Childcare Service for the purposes of assessing sufficiency and that this can be published to Find Childcare in Devon for the purposes of providing information to parents, depending on the consent you have set. Then you have a space for any comments for the local authority. These will not be published to Find Childcare in Devon. Once complete, press the blue Submit button in the bottom right corner of the screen. An orange notepad will appear next to any changes you have made. Click on the Availability and Capacity tab. This will take you to a subset of tabs. The first being opening dates. Here you will need to create a record for your opening hours. These are your full operating hours. Funded providers will also need to create a record here for funded hours. These are times that you have allocated for children to use their funded hours. In most cases, opening hours and funded hours will be the same. If opening hours or funded hours are already listed here, please click on the description, which is a link to take you in to edit and make updates if necessary. To add a new opening date, click on the Add Opening Date button. You will see another subset of tabs, the first tab being opening dates. Please enter the details. To edit, just overwrite the existing content. Please refer to the guidance notes for more information on these dates. To start with, we will enter opening hours. I will enter the date 25th of December 2022. Leave the end date blank and I don't have any comments for the local authority. Then press the blue submit button in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. An orange notepad will appear next to any changes you have made. Click on the next tab, Opening Times. Here, we need to add the opening times for each day of the week. To do this, click Add Opening Time. Add the day, the start time, the end time in 24 hour clock, the capacity of children, any vacancies you might have for that day, any description if necessary and any comments if necessary. Please press the blue submit button. Press the back button to get back to the opening times table. You'll then need to repeat this process for each day of the week you are open. Once you have entered your opening times, you can navigate to opening times exceptions. Opening time exceptions are any temporary openings or closings. Please refer to the guidance notes for more information. To add an opening time exception, click on the blue Add Opening Time Exception button. Enter the information. Click on the blue Submit button. Please check the Is Open tick box carefully. If this exception is a time when your provision is open, please put a tick in the box. If this exception is a temporary closure, please make sure the tick box does not have a tick. Press the orange back button in the bottom left corner of the screen. Press the back button again, and this will take you back to your opening hours record. Funded providers will now have to add in funded hours in the same way as you add opening hours. Please use the start date, 1st to the 1st, 
2023. Please click on the next tab, Availability. Here, you need to indicate how many weeks you're open and when your service is available. Once you've made your changes, scroll down and press the blue Submit button. An orange notepad will appear next to any changes you have made. Click on the next tab, Age Range. Please enter the information. To edit, simply overwrite the existing content. The two, three and four year old funding tick boxes indicate whether you accept early years funding for two, three and four year olds. You will not be able to make changes to these. If this needs to be changed, please contact eyef at devon.gov.uk. Once you finish, scroll down and press the blue Submit button. An orange notepad will appear next to any changes you have made. Click on the next tab, Capacity Details. Please enter the number of children in each age range, where appropriate, that can attend your provision at any one time. This is not the number of children on roll. The total children in each age range should add up to the total number of children you can take at any one time in line with your staffing ratios and space and be no more than your Ofsted registration. Please enter the capacity date as today's date. Under service age range, click on the add age range button. Enter the details into the table. For age range, please refer to the guidance notes at the top of the screen in the grey box or for more information, access the guidance notes online. For waiting list, please enter the number of children in each age range selected that you have on a waiting list who could start immediately if you had a place. For vacancies, please enter the number of vacancies available for children in the age range selected. Then add your capacity. If there is already an age range listed, click on that age range to edit. Please repeat these steps until you have added all the children you can take at any one time. Remember, that the total children in each age range should add up to the total number of children you can take as per your offset registration. In this case, it's 24. If you make a mistake, you can delete a row by clicking on the red clear button. Once you've completed this table, scroll down and click the blue submit button. An orange notepad will appear next to any changes you have made. Click on the next tab, Vacancies. Please enter your vacancy information. This information will be displayed to parents on Find Childcare. Tick this box if you would like parents to contact you for vacancy information. Tick this box if you have a vacancy available where a child could start immediately. Tick this box if you have a waiting list of children who could start now if a space becomes available. Once you've made your changes, scroll down and click on the blue Submit button. An orange notepad will appear next to any changes you have made. Press the orange Back button in the bottom left corner of the screen. This will take you back to the Service Details page, which you have already completed. Click on the Travel tab. You will see the Travel Details screen. Please provide information about parking spaces, your own transport, travel and school pickup. To edit, overwrite existing content. Once you have entered the relevant information, scroll down and press the blue Submit button. An orange notepad will appear next to any changes you have made. Click on the School Pickup tab. This section is to indicate whether you pick up and or drop off from local schools. 
If you do not offer this service, you can leave this section blank. To add a school pickup, click on the blue Add School Pickup button. Next to the school pickup, click the blue Select button. Enter the name or part of the name of the school in the search box. You can select a type to refine your search further if you wish. Click on the blue Find button. Click on the name of the school in blue to select it. Enter a memo if required, such as Mondays only. Add a comment for the local authority if you wish. This comment will not be published. Press the blue submit button in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. An orange notepad will appear next to any changes you have made. Press the orange back button. This will take you back to the school pickups page and you will see your school pickup listed. Repeat these steps by adding another school pickup if you pick up from other schools. To remove a school pickup, click on the red clear all button in the row against the school pickup you want to remove. Press the orange back button in the bottom left corner of the screen again. This will take you back to the service details page, which you've already completed. Click on the costs tab. You will see the service charges page. Please add charge details for all age ranges you care for. To do this, click on the blue add charge details button. Add the age range. Please use the same age ranges you have entered in the capacity. Refer to the guidance notes for more information. Then enter a charge per hour as a minimum for each age range. Charge per session, per day, per week and per term are optional. Press the blue submit button in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. An orange notepad will appear next to any changes you have made. Press the orange back button in the bottom left corner of the screen. This will take you back to the service charges page and you will see the charges you have just entered in the table. Please repeat these steps for each age range. To edit existing charges, please click on the age range description, which will appear in blue. This will take you back to the charge detail page. Make your changes and press the blue submit button. If you need to delete a row from the table, you can click on the red clear all button. Navigate to the next tab, cost details. Please indicate here whether you charge for additional services. You can indicate if you charge for food, activities, craft supplies, essential extras and other items on the additional information tab. Once you've made your changes, press the blue submit button. An orange notepad will appear next to any changes you have made. Press the orange back button in the bottom left corner of the screen. This will take you back to the service details screen, which you have already completed. Click on the next tab, Facilities. Please provide information about your facilities. Here, you can indicate if you have an accessible toilet, kitchen facilities, outdoor space and pets. Tick the accessible premises box if all parts of the building that you use for your provision can be accessed by wheelchairs. 
All childcare is required to be inclusive as part of the Equality Act 2010 and make reasonable adjustments to meet the needs of all children and their families. Please leave this box blank. The guidance notes provides further information around offering culturally diverse provision. Please read the guidance and then select you have read and understood the guidance around culturally diverse provision. Please make sure you are aware of and understand the Special Educational Needs and Disabilities Code of Practice 2015. Then select that you adhere to the SEND Code of Practice. Next, indicate any languages spoken at your provision. Any special diets? And whether you are willing to care for children at short notice for emergency situations. Once you have filled out this information, scroll down and click on the blue Submit button in the bottom right corner of the screen. An orange notepad will appear next to any changes you have made. Click on the next tab, Additional Information. Please provide the relevant information. To edit, simply overwrite the existing content. There are different sections to these questions, which are separated by headings starting and ending with three stars. All providers need to fill out the first section and the additional cost information section. There is a section for out of school providers. Funded providers with questions starting with FP and childminders with questions starting with CM. Please complete all sections that apply. For example, if you are a funded childminder, please complete the top section, the additional cost information section, the funded providers section, and the childminders section. If you are a non-funded out-of-school club, please complete the top section, the additional cost information section and the out-of-school club question. Please refer to the guidance notes for more information about these questions. Once you have made your changes, scroll down and press the blue Submit button in the bottom right corner of the screen. An orange notepad will appear next to any changes you have made. If you have checked all your information and are happy that it is correct and there are no changes required, then you can navigate to the additional information tab, scroll to the bottom of the screen, and click on the green No Changes Required button in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Then click the blue Yes button to confirm that all the values are correct and there are no changes required. Here you will see it is saved successfully. Once you have submitted all changes, or click that no changes are required, you can either navigate to home to continue to do another task in the portal or sign out in the top right of the screen. For more information, please visit devon.cc forward slash PSU or email childcareinfo at devon.gov.uk. You can also follow us on Facebook and X. Thanks for watching.